Did Adam Schefter on ESPN just reveal what the New York Giants are going to do in the 2024 NFL Draft when it comes to drafting a quarterback? I thought he had some really interesting quotes. If there's anybody I'm going to believe on what the Giants are doing, it's Adam Schefter. He's plugged in. He doesn't say things for clicks. He just gets to the substance. And what he said about the Giants and drafting a quarterback, you are going to want to hear it. You're also going to want to be here on Thursday of next week for our live coverage of day one of the 2024 NFL Draft. First off, I just want to say thank you to everybody that has subscribed to this channel. We crossed over 46,000 subs a couple of days ago. That is a massive, massive accomplishment, and it's all because of you guys. But the show does not stop right there. We're trying to get to 46,500 subscribers by draft night. So subscribe, turn your notifications on, and I'll see you when the Giants are on the clock. This is what Adam Schefter said. We'll just dive into it. I'm going to take the Giants at their word. They seem to have implied they have other needs at other positions. I think they are going to take a QB relatively high, but up high, they seem to point to other areas before QB. The Giants say they have other needs, but their actions tell another story. They've put a lot of work in quarterbacks. There's a lot to take away from that quote. One, he has been told that the Giants are not going to select a quarterback in round one, which I believe unless a really, really great situation uh, comes up where they could trade up. Two, he said the Giants are going to draft a quarterback pretty high. So those are the two things I took away. I also took away that he said they did a lot of work, and they have. The Giants have done extensive work on the top quarterbacks in this class, from pro days to private workouts to going to see them play on Saturdays in the fall. Joe Shane has done a very thorough job of scouting the top quarterbacks in this class. And we also know from other beat reporters and other reporters, the Giants have done their homework. Jordan Renan tweeted this out on the 16th, said Albert Breer told us the Giants have inquired about trading up, might need to get up to pick four or five to land a quarterback. Also said, Joe Shane and Brian Dable have done extensive work on the draft's top QBs, including private workouts with some of the top prospects. Ownership, John Mara, has given the Giants the blessing to draft a quarterback if they so desire. Also says, there are four QBs that will be drafted in the top 10, possibly six in round one. Well, the Giants, they have had four quarterbacks come in on top 30 visits. And I am going to take that as... This is important because the Giants in the past have made it a priority to select players, not just in the first round, but in the later rounds when it comes to their top 30 visits. And the reason I bring that up is they wouldn't just waste a top 30 visit on a prospect just to do so. Because think about it like this as I pull up my list of top 30 visits over the last two years. Kayvon Thibodeau, Evan Neal, Cordell Flott, Dane Belton, DJ Davidson, Deontay Banks, John Michael Schmitz, Jalen Hyatt, and Trey Hawkins. Nine draft picks over the last two years have been top 30 visits, which tells me the Giants place a big importance on that, and they wouldn't just waste it. May, Daniels, McCarthy, and Penix are the guys that have had top 30 visits. We'll dive more into this, but I want you to light up the comment section. Predict it for me. We're about a week away. A week away, baby. Do the Giants take a QB in round one? Predict it. Let me know. Type Y for yes, type N for no. If I had to make a prediction here on April 16th, it would be this. The Giants are not going to select a quarterback with their first pick in round one, whether that's pick six or whether they trade up. Or the only way they would select a quarterback is if they trade up. I don't think they're going to be able to trade up. If I'm wrong, I will say I'm wrong. My prediction is no QB will be selected with the Giants with their first selection in the first round. But I am not ruling out the idea that Joe Shane may try to jump back into round one or jump to the top of round two to select a quarterback. If they do, I'm hoping it's Michael Penix, but I could also see them making that type of move for Bo Nix. Mel Kuyper has talked about it a couple times. Field Yates has talked about it a couple times. And Adam Schefter says he believes the Giants are going to select a quarterback with one of their high selections. There's really only six, seven quarterbacks that are expected to go in round one and round two. So maybe it's Penix. Maybe it's Bo Nix. I'm not ruling up. I'm not ruling out a trade-up for one of those two quarterbacks. Coming up next, 
I'm going to rank my top 10 quarterbacks in the 2024 NFL draft class, try to paint a picture of what the Giants should do, and ultimately I will tell you how they should handle the draft when it comes to the quarterback position. That's around the corner. Right now, I got to tell you guys about our proud sponsor, Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use that promo code CLNS and Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app, will match your first deposit up to $100. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. All you do is create a lineup of two to six players, and you simply choose more or less on their projected stat line. Pick more, pick less, play Prize Picks. Win big money, withdraw your winnings. Turn your ball knowledge into some dollars and do it now as they already have some season-long projections for some star NFL players. They've got Brian Burns' sack total for the year at 8.75. I'm taking the more on that. He's getting double digits. And I also think Justin Jefferson is going to touch pay dirt more than eight and a half times. You can roll with my picks or fade my picks, but do it with our proud sponsor, Price Picks. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the promo code CLNS, and they'll match your first deposit up to $100. All right, let's finish the show as I rank my top 10 quarterbacks. Number one, Caleb Williams. Uh, I don't really have much more to say than he's the best quarterback in this class, and I think everybody that has already spoken on Caleb Williams has done a really good job. I think he's a generational talent, and he could be a perennial MVP in this league. Number two, I have Drake May. I know that May has started to slip down some draft boards because he skips a couple of hitch routes or because he needs to work on his accuracy and not play hero ball. But when I put on the tape, I see a big-time player that makes big-time plays. He was great in 2022. Play kind of fell off a little bit in 2023 because he didn't have any help around him. But he's a prototypical type of QB. Six foot four, 230 pounds, can touch every blade of grass with the throw. He's an underrated athlete, and I think he's got superstar potential. You look at the stats over the last two years, and what it tells me is he can throw it, he can run it, he's going to be a leader. Does he need to sharpen up a little bit? Absolutely. Is he a finished product? Not even close. But I think the ceiling for him is all pro type of quarterback. I'm not saying he is Josh Allen, but I could see him taking a Josh Allen type of leap, whereas you didn't think he was going to be all that great, still a top uh, first-round QB, but he might be a guy that could be competing in Super Bowls and win an MVP. At the three spot, I have Jaden Daniels, a Heisman winner out of LSU. I think he's got a pretty high floor when it comes to the quarterback position just because of the athletic ability that he does have. And I also think that if he goes to the right place, maybe it's the Vikings, maybe it's the Giants, makes a lot of sense. I'd love to see him work under Brian Dable. The growth, though, for the six foot four, 210 pound Heisman winner trophy, Heisman trophy winner, was really the reason I've kind of fallen in love with this prospect. The player you saw in 2022 was not the player you saw in 2023. The player you saw at Arizona State, not even close to the player he was in 2023. Completion percentage, up four. Percent passing yards up almost a thousand, passing touchdowns more than doubled, and his yards per attempt went from seven and a half to eleven point seven. So more put more was put on his plate. He was asked to do more, and he did more. And I think that is the, a sign of a player that's ready to be a franchise quarterback. And on top of that, he's the best running quarterback in this draft class. Would like to see him be better as a scrambler, creating plays with his arms. But right now, when he decides to tuck it. He might just go the distance. QB4 for me is the Michigan man, J.J. McCarthy. I just like J.J. McCarthy. I believe he's going to be a good quarterback in this league. There's a lot to like. There's also a lot to be worried about. Can he be the best player on an offense that's going to have success in the NFL? Because when you're a quarterback and you're paid the big bucks, that's what you're expected to do. And he wasn't that at Michigan. He was surrounded by a lot of great players. But I think he deserves credit for being able to drive the ship because it is super easy as the quarterback to mess it up when everything else is right. I just like what he does. I think he's an underrated athlete. He was graded out in like the 90 plus percentile in his, uh, in his three cone drill. He's a good runner. He was dunking the basketball in like eighth grade. Uh, I also think he's really good outside of structure and outside of the pocket. When the play breaks down, he can tuck it and run it, but what I think he does just as good as anybody if this, in this class, if not better, is 
break contain of the pocket, maintain vision down the field, and just having a knack to create big explosive plays. Um, I'm a fan. Does he need to change up some things? Yeah, I don't love that he only throws a fastball. Not a lot of touch, not a lot of anticipation in those throws. I think that can come, and I love the way he targets the middle of the field. I think that fits perfectly in a Dable Kafka offense. QB5, I have Michael Penix Jr., the lefty flamethrower. Like if you're talking about a quarterback in a clean pocket, I'm not sure there's anyone better than Penix. I don't think anyone touches outside of the numbers consistently better than he does. A little bit worried about the Husky offense. Kind of gives me some vibes of the Tennessee Volunteer offense. Throwing from one hash to the wide part of the field with two twin set wide receivers out there with running a corner and an out route in the high low. That's just not an NFL concept. But what it shows me is he has an electric, electric arm. Outside the numbers, he's better than anyone else. But there's also there's some things I'm really worried about. And that's the fact that he played in just 11 games from in the 2020 and 2021 season. He was great when he became the quarterback of Washington. But the injury issues and concerns, as well as the age, and really not being the best quarterback outside of the pocket, creating plays with his legs, even though he ran a fast 40, I worry about his playmaking skills a little bit. Uh, I think he needs a clean pocket, and I'm just not so sure the Giants will do that. But man, oh man, if they can get him in round two, that would be a home run pick for Joe Shane. Let's go through these quickly. Number six, I have Spencer Rattler. At this point, if you're outside my top five, I'm betting on traits. Big time arm, has a lot of talent, was once projected to be a first round pick. I'm just going to bet on the skill. I'm going to bet on the athleticism. I got Spencer Rattler at QB6 with Bo Nix at QB7. A lot to like about Bo Nix when it comes to taking care of the football, being a game manager, getting the ball out quickly, on time, and on target. But more than 50% of his passes, 60 70% of his passes, were thrown less than nine yards from the line of scrimmage. Will that type of production translate to NFL Sunday success? I've got a major question mark on that. Also, one of the older prospects at the quarterback position. Michael Pratt is a quarterback we haven't talked about a lot on this program. And look, I have missed QB8. I like him. I don't love him. Uh, I think he could do a little bit of everything. I wouldn't mind him being a, a fourth or a fifth round QB. But ultimately, and I'll say in a second, if he's not a top five QB on my list, I don't think you just throw that dart because you had the dart in your hand. No need to waste a pick on a quarterback. That may not be the guy when you could just help the team out now. Number nine, Jordan Travis. I like his athletic upside. I thought he played pretty well this past year before injury. I saw some growth year over year. Um, I like what he brings to a football team. I think he's a leader. Uh, I think the way that his Florida State teammates talk about him shows that. I like him as a player. I like him as a person. Late day three. Probably doesn't make it there, but that's kind of where I have him. And then Tua Tagovailoa's brother. I believe his name is T T Talia is how you say it. Um, just something about him when I watch him play, the touch, the anticipation, the quick release. He reminds me just of like the Dollar Tree kind of Tua, uh, not the strongest arm in the world. I think he creates and improvises and, and can move a little bit more than Tua, but I think he sees the field really well. And I think he throws with great anticipation, touch. Again, he's QB 10, um, day three guy at best. Overall, if you take anything away from this video, it is this. If the Giants do not take Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jane Daniels, J.J. McCarthy, or Michael Penix, I don't want it. I don't want a quarterback just for the sake of drafting a quarterback. Don't waste that pick now when you could use that pick to make your team better now and in the future. Not saying 6 through 10 can't be good. One of them will be. Maybe. But do I, are any of those guys guys that I want to rock with? Let's say this. Let's say the Giants pick Jordan Travis in round five, right? And after this year, it is still apparent they need a quarterback. That pick's wasted. You didn't get a full evaluation of Travis as a starter, and now you're just going to draft one again in round one. So that's kind of where I am on that. Top five, and if it ain't top five, I don't want them. Make sure you are following me over on social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram, at MarshallGreen underscore. Hit me up over there, and make sure to tap that thumbs up icon for me on the way out.